I'm Ben Bapti, I'm a mix engineer um, and I was an assistant before that but now I'm a mix engineer full time and I've been doing that for about a year. So the way I kind of got to this stage was um, I was an assistant to a mix engineer called Tom Elmhurst, um, working in London with him and then we moved to New York to Electric Lady Studios three years ago uh, and then from there was working on pretty big records with him, um, stuff like Beck, Arcade Fire, um, which was obviously all amazing. So since I've been freelance, um, I was lucky enough to do a lot of engineering and mixing on the most recent U2 album. Recently mixed Albert Hammond Jr. from The Strokes new record, on James Morrison's new record, and been doing stuff like single mixes for Ray Morris. Um, there's been quite a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of stuff going on. I was assisting with Tom, um, and Tom's always used a VR. And so it was very much a case of seeing it day in, day out, how it worked and all that kind of stuff. Even though in the studio that we worked in, there was, you know, there was SSLs, APIs, everything. Um, working day in, day out with the, with the Neve very quickly became very accustomed and aware of what it was capable of and what it could give you back as well as, you know, how you had to treat it and all that kind of stuff. And then when I started doing my own mixes, it became very clear why Tom worked the way he did in it and also it felt very natural to me to work the way I do on it. Um, because it's so hands-on and very fast, you don't actually, you can stop thinking about the technical side of things. You don't have to go through a list of plugins or you don't have to worry about what it's going to, you know what it does and it's very, very fast and it's very hands-on. And so the creativity never dies away because you're trying to get around something or do something which takes ages. It's just quick and loud you can push this thing pretty hot um, so that's what's really nice is you can you can toy with it as well and it gives you back something so it's nice in that way for me personally um, I will always try and mix in a VR um, so I can't particularly carry one around very easily but it's fine um, but then I'll always have KLK 9000s but then in terms of if I'm mixing apart from that it kind of doesn't it's mainly the board that I actually use I don't really use very much outboard gear ever um, just on the mix bus and on, on the vocal and that's kind of normally and maybe on the bass and the rest is I'll use the dynamics on the board um, and then whatever outboard effects the, the studio has is, doesn't really bother me. Um, but then if I'm recording, um, I'll, I've got a 500 series that I will take around with me sometimes. Um, you know, there's just a few bits and pieces that I like to do but because it's mainly mixing I'm doing, it's kind of actually down to the board more than anything. So. Pretty simple, pretty simple setup. 2264s, um, I've been using on this James record quite a lot um, over like any piano or kind of um, any kind of keysy stuff which has got very accentuated to a lot of road stuff, you know, all that kind of thing, whirlies, all that kind of stuff that's been on that. And it's purely through the way I use 2254s, and then 2064s, and now these are obviously available. So it's actually been really nice because I know all the way. Um, and it's mainly just, the release on them, so it's perfect for keys. So you don't actually feel any of the compression. You just suddenly you can just turn it up, and it doesn't poke out. It doesn't, it, and it's. But then the release is always so it feels rhythmic in the way it does it. So so I've been using them quite a lot, and they've been great, been really really good. And then actually with the with the DI, what's actually been really good is because um, there's been a lot of DI bass on the record. There's not really many bass amps apparently available anymore. Um, because there's the, what is it, the, the reg where you can, you can, so you basically send it through the mic path, but it's not actually doing that. You know I mean? It's just sending it through the tiny transformer. So I've been doing that with a lot of the DI stuff, and it just doesn't do a lot. It does a little bit, and that's kind of all I need, um, just to make it not feel like a complete DI bass all the time. But, so it's nice, it's been really good. They've been really, really helpful.